God. <laughs> <sighs> the cheese it story the cheese it story the cheese <sighs> the cheese it story was real the cheese it story was real are you serious out of everything in the world you could have told these detectives. You told them that you were blindfolded and fed cheese crackers. Why some... <laughs> you were blindfolded and, and fed Cheez-Its while they played in your hair and painted your nails in the back of an 18-wheeler. Oh, my God. Oh, oh boy. I, I cannot. I cannot sit here and make this video. <laughs> oh. Um. Carly Russell's. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Carly Russell's press conference happened today. And. Boy, oh boy, are things looking really bad for Carly Russell right now. You know, there was a rumor floating online about Carly being kidnapped by some orange-haired man that fed her Cheez-Its and drove her around in an 18-wheeler all day. And, I mean, when I heard that theory, I laughed my ass off originally. But it turns out that is the actual story that Carly used with law enforcement. I, I seriously, I cannot get the words out. I am trying, I cannot get the words out. She told law enforcement that she was kidnapped by an orange haired man with a bald spot that threw her in the back of an 18 wheeler along with this toddler, blindfolded her, Possibly took pictures of her. He had a, fem a female companion that she couldn't see, but she knows for sure that she was fed Cheez-Its and they played with her hair. I mean, <clears throat> there was a lot of stuff revealed at this press conference. For one, Carly stole from her job. We don't know about the money yet. I believe that Carly probably stole some money as well, but Carly did steal a bathrobe and toilet paper. 
because you want you you know she wanted to be cozy while she was pretending to be kidnapped. She wanted to be nice and snug and cozy in a nice warm robe. And of course, she needed extra toilet paper <clears throat> because after all, before she got kidnapped, she went to Target and bought Cheez-Its, granola bars, and she went and got some takeout food, some euros. And I guess she anticipated that she may have diarrhea or something along those lines. I don't know. But <clears throat> Whew, she... <laughs> It, man she apparently she thought this was a well-crafted story um listen i gotta get it together i'm gonna roll this clip so you can hear what the detectives say because i cannot talk with a straight face right now no matter how hard i try detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released during the statement she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child. A man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again, and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded, but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair, but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, Detective noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip, and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. So there it is, folks. And that's not even the half of it. Honestly, if you're still believing Carly Russell right now, you are a real Mick dumbass. And to even believe her up until this point, I can tell you right now, maybe true crime isn't your thing. If you couldn't spot the, the holes in Carly Russell's story and just the fact that this scenario was unbelievable, then I don't know what to tell you. I know one thing, though. After the Rudy Farias story and this story, I absolutely refuse to sit on this app. I absolutely refuse to sit on YouTube and play stupid just to protect other people's feelings anymore. I'm going to start saying how I feel when I feel it. Because you all know I've been trying to bite my tongue. I've been trying to be respectful. But we've been calling this out as straight BS from day one, and I kind of felt like I was shackled. Unlike Carly Russell, I felt like I was shackled while covering this case because I had to sit here and dumb myself down when we all knew that this was a freaking ridiculous story to begin with. And then I was getting labeled as racist and all types of nonsense because I pointed out that her story was very obviously a lie. But who's the real racist now? I think it's Carly Russell. She fabricated a fake story about some white dude with orange hair and a bald spot that kidnapped her along with his white toddler and his white female accomplice that played with her hair and fed her cheeses. So in other words, she tried to frame an innocent white dude simply because 
she's racist or she thought that, you know, feeding into people's racial fears would make people believe this case more. Because make no mistake about it, they did. Everyone was like, oh, it's racist Alabama. They must have lynched her. They got her. It's the damn racist white supreme pizzas. They're always out there. Like, no. <laughs> the real racists have exposed themselves over the, over the past few days. You all tried to bring race into a conversation where race should never be involved. Missing people cases is not the place for you to spread your racial nonsense. There were plenty of people of all races and all backgrounds that were worried about Carly, and there are plenty of people of all races and all backgrounds that knew that she was full of shit once they looked into the story enough. And another thing, <clears throat> stop trying to put all black people in a box. Black people are not a monolith. They are allowed to think differently, just like every other type of human being. I've seen a lot of people claiming that black people are traitors. You know, they're traitors and they're turning on their own race if they questioned Carly. No, people just have common sense. Stop trying to place people in a box while using the race card. The race card was used way too much throughout this story. And I'm going to tell you right now, Carly lying, that's not going to have damage on the coverage that missing women of color get. What's going to have damage on the coverage of what missing women get as people who are attacking people and calling them racist when they try to cover this story. I've seen respectable people in this community that go out of their way to help people and help missing persons and the family of missing persons all the time. I have seen them dragged through the mud. I've seen people say so many bad things about them when they were only trying to help. All of this racial nonsense, best believe, I got the screenshots and we are having a grand old time over on Twitter. If you have not been following me on Twitter the past couple of days, then you have really been missing out because we are letting loose over there. I got the receipts. I got the screenshots. We're calling people out. We're posting the memes because guess what? We're all going to have fun around this situation because we earned it. Not much in the true crime community while covering missing persons cases are we allowed to be humorous. Are we allowed to crack jokes? So you better believe now that we know that Carly straight up lied and came up with one of the most bogus stories imaginable that I'm going to be laughing about it for the next few days. And unfortunately for Carly, she hasn't told the truth. Her family has not come out with the truth. The investigation continues and the longer this drags on, the longer I'm going to continue to drag her ass on Twitter and on YouTube because people have been labeled as racist. People have been called liars. People tried to act like I had no credibility, tried to drag my name through the mud simply because I could spot the real from the fake in this nonsense story. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the half of it. There was a lot more information revealed during the press conference. But you know how I do my videos. I do little breakdowns. And honestly, I wasn't really capable of doing a breakdown right now because I could not stop laughing. But there's plenty of other details that we're going to be getting into in more videos. That's right. We have plenty of Carly Russell videos. They're going to be getting pumped out all night. Just like people were pumping that nonsense out on Twitter and attacking people who asked questions. We're going to be having a great time. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Ring the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter. You do not want to miss this. And you know, I should have known that something was wrong with this story the very moment I laid eyes on it because they were sharing photos of Carly as a nurse or in nursing school and graduating. And they were not showing current photos of what Carly looked like. This happens all the time and it gave me a very bad vibe from day one. When you see, oh, look, this is Carly in high school. Look, this is this person in middle school. Look at all of these totally innocent photos. We're not going to show you what she really looks like. They do this all the time. And these stories, when the details are shady and they know it, they try to make people look more innocent and believable by giving you old photos. How many times does a criminal do something or we have a dramatic situation and all over the news, all over the news, all over the internet, you see these high school photos of someone 
who was involved in a crime at the age of 50. People be out here in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, and the media shares pictures of them graduating high school, so you think they're still a young kid, and you get this certain image in your mind of what they look like. I know you all know cases like that, and you could probably name some of them down below because we've all seen it before. But yeah, this has to be one of the most bogus, nonsensical stories I have ever seen, and I am just getting started. We haven't even talked about this girl's Google searches yet. Oh my God. But for right now, let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. I gotta go out here and laugh because I am about to throw up from laughing so hard. Let me know your thoughts below. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I'll be talking to you all soon in the next video.